Hi, my name's Chris Smith and I'm co-founder and currently director of Storytelling Schools. This is the first in a series of five video clips where we explain about the idea and show you how to learn to tell a story for yourself and also how to teach your class to tell the story. The basic idea of the Storytelling School is simple. All children learn to be storytellers. They learn to tell stories from memory as a way of learning language and also as a way of learning subject content at the same time. The idea comes from a piece of research that I did with Pi Corbett maybe 10 years ago now where we looked at schools in Oxfordshire villages and in Oxford City and asked the question what would a whole school approach to storytelling look like where storytelling is the springboard for learning. Out of that came this approach and you can find it all in the Storytelling Schools handbook if you want to read more about it. Typically in a storytelling school at the beginning of each half term the children learn to tell a story and then this is linked to the teaching of writing and also to the teaching of topic content. Let me explain to you how it works. This picture behind me shows you the normal system. First, at the beginning of term, the children learn to tell the story. That may take an hour or two with the teacher telling it, and then the children going through a process of mapping it, stepping it, and speaking it, which will be explained in the next set of videos. After that, there's a period called deepening, where the children re-explore the story using drama and art and dance and music and research and all sorts of things so that the story develops linguistically and also imaginatively in the minds of the children so that before they get to write anything they've got lots of words and ideas to draw on. After that the teacher may teach the story using shared writing as a way of demonstrating excellent writing practice before the children have a go themselves. Alternatively, or additionally, the teacher may choose to innovate. This means taking the original story and changing it a bit, or changing it a lot. Where the original story is used as the springboard for the new one, that's what we call innovation in this system. So, if the giant turnip becomes a giant carrot, that's innovation. Or, if the whole story is retold in a completely different way. Let's say Little Red Riding Hood becomes Little Red Astronaut going through space, Dif mm, trying to get away from the mm, big bad alien. That's also innovation because we're referencing the original story when we tell the new one. And the great thing about innovation is the child can put their own ideas, their own interests into the story and it usually creates a lot of excitement. Once the child has innovated their story, then they can tell it, they can deepen it, and then they can write it. So that's a second route to practicing writing. The third thing that can happen in that term is that the child may invent a new story not related to a story which they've learned. So it may just be a story about a journey or a story set in a particular setting. And there we have a thing called the plot matrix, which we use to teach story invention. It's the only thing we think you really need to make great stories and understand how great stories work. And when a child has invented the story using that method, then they'll tell it, they'll deepen it, and they'll write their own story. So you can find out as a teacher how good they are at making up their own stories and how good they are at taking the things that you've taught them during the imitation and innovation stages and feeding it into their independent writing when they make up stories themselves. That's the basic system and you can see here that reading can be linked at any stage in the process. You can read stories before you tell them, you can read versions and research stories when you deepen the story and you can use exemplar texts when you write the story. So reading can be linked in in lots of ways depending on how you want to do it. The most important thing about this for me is that in a storytelling school, we care about making great stories. It teaches language, you can use it to teach grammar and spelling and all of that, but the purpose of it in the end is to produce great stories that the child feels proud of. 
That's what we do in storytelling schools. Then, when this system has been learnt, you can also apply it to other things. Usually it's used to teach non-fiction in the same way, where an oral piece of non-fiction is told first, then is researched and deepened before being linked to writing. Once the pattern of the non-fiction piece has been learnt, it can be recycled through innovation using different subject content. And this may be fiction, fantasy or fact. In non-fiction, it's all about learning the structure of a piece and then learning to apply it to all sorts of different topics. And this storytelling framework allows you to do that. Also, it's great for teaching poetry, great for teaching song, and you can obviously use stories to teach history, to teach science, to teach almost anything. Use the story as a springboard, and then from there, you can teach whatever you want as a teacher, knowing that the child has connected to the subject and understands the content. So that's the method and our experience is that teachers and students alike love it. It's engaging, inspiring, easy to learn and efficient to use. It's proved to raise standards in writing and raise the morale and the confidence of teachers and students, helping everybody find their voice. So if you want to know more about it, have a look at our handbook or watch the next set of videos which will show you how to learn stories, tell them to your class and teach your class to tell them back to you.